Canto 26, Circle 8, Bolia 8, The Evil Counselors. Joy to you, Florence, that your banners swell, beating their proud wings over land and sea, and that your name expands through all of hell. Among the thieves I found five who had been your citizens, to my shame, nor yet shall you mount to great honor, peopling such a den. But if the truth is dreamed of toward the morning, you soon shall feel what Prato and the others wish for you. And were that day of morning already come, it would not be too soon. So may it come, since it must, for it will weigh more heavily on me as I pass my noon. We left that place, my guide, climbed stone by stone the natural stair by which we had descended, and drew me after him. So we passed on, and going our lonely way through that dread land among the crags and crevices of the cliff, the foot could make no way without the hand. I mourned among the, those rocks, and I mourn again when memory returns to what I saw. And more than usually, I curb the strain of my genius, let it stray from virtue's course. So, if some star, or a better thing, grant me merit, I may not find the gift cause for remorse. As many fireflies as the peasant sees when he rests on a hill and looks into the valley, where he tills or gathers grapes or prunes his trees, in that sweet season when the face of him who lights the world rides north, and at the hour when the fly yields to the gnat and the air grows dim, such myriads of flames I saw shine through the glooms of the eight abyss when I arrived at the rim from which its bed comes into view. As he bears, avenged so fearfully, beheld Elijah's chariot depart, the horses rise towards heaven, but could not see more than the flame, a cloudlet in the sky, once it had risen. So, within the fosse, only those flames, forever passing by, were visible, ahead, to the right, to left. For, Though each steals a sinner's soul from view, not one among them leaves a trace of the theft. I stood on the bridge and leaned out far from the edge, so far that but for a jut of rock I held to, I should have been sent hurtling from the edge without being pushed. And seeing me so intent, my guide said, There are souls within those flames. Each sinner swathes himself in his own torment. Master, I said, your words make me more sure, but I had seen already that it was so, and meant to ask what spirit must endure the pains of the great flame, which splits away into great horns, as if it rose from the pyre where Ateocles and Polynices lay. He answered me, forever round this path, Ulysses, and Diomede move in such dress, united in pain as once they were in wrath. There they lament the ambush of the horse, which was the door through which the noble seed of the Romans issued from its holy source. There they mourn that for Achilles slain, sweet Diadamia weeps even in death. There they recall the palladium in their pain. Master, I cried, I pray you and re-pray till my prayer becomes a thousand if these souls can still speak from the fire. Oh, let me stay until the flame draws near. Do not deny me. You see how fervently I long for it. And he, to me, since what you ask is worthy, it shall be. But be still and let me speak, for I know your mind already. And they, perhaps, might scorn your manner of speaking since they were Greek. And when the flame had come, where time and place seemed fitting to my guide, I heard him say these words to it. O oh, you two souls who pace together in one flame, if my days above one favor in your eyes, I have earned however much or little of your love in writing my high verses. Do not pass by, but let one of you be pleased to tell where he 
having disappeared from the known world, went to die. As if it fought the wind, the greater prong of the ancient flame began to quiver and hum, then moving its tip as if it were the tongue that spoke, gave out a voice above the roar. When I left, Circe, it said, who more than a year detained me, detained me near Gaeta, long before Aeneas came and gave the place that name, not fondness for my son, nor reverence for my aged father, nor Penelope's claim to the joys of love could drive out of my mind the lust to experience the far-flung world and the failings and felicities of mankind. I put out on high and open sea with a single ship, and only those few souls who stayed true when the rest deserted me. As far as Morocco, and as far as Spain, I saw both shores, and I saw Sardinia and the other islands of the open main. I and my men were stiff and slow with age when we sailed at last into the narrow pass, where, warning all men back from further voyage, Hercules' pillars rose upon our sight. Already I had left Ceuta on the left. Seville now sank behind me on the right. Shipmates, I said, who through a hundred thousand perils have reached the west, do not deny to the brief remaining watch our senses stand experience of the world beyond the sun. Greeks, you were not born to live like brutes, but to press on toward manhood and recognition. With this brief exhortation, I made my crew so eager for the voyage, I could hardly have held them back from it when I was through. And turning our stern toward morning, our bow toward night, we bore southwest out of the world of man. We made wings of our oars for our fool's flight. That night, we raised the other pole ahead with all its stars, and ours had so declined that it did not rise out of its ocean bed. Five times since we had dipped our bending oars beyond the world, the light beneath the moon, and waxed and waned when, dead upon our course, we sighted, dark in space, a peak so tall I doubted any man had seen the like. Our cheers were hardly sounded when a squall broke hard upon our bow from the new land. Three times it sucked the ship and the sea about as it pleased, another to order and command. At the fourth, the poop rose and the bow went down till the sea closed over us and the light was gone.